Welcome to the Unaffiliated Creatives Podcast, a show where independent artists can learn from other independent artists. My name is K.A. Everyday, and each week I will be speaking with some of the most creative minds in the indie music space, trying to figure out what they have learned while navigating through the music industry without the support of major record labels. This podcast is brought to you by the good people over at King Neppy Studios and powered by Red Weasel Media. Thanks for tuning in to the Unaffiliated Creators Podcast, episode number six. I'm your host, K.A. Everyday. This is the end of y'all to safe place, so take off your shoes and get comfortable and stay a while. Do us a favor and please rate the show. And if you have any feedback for us, please email us at unaffiliatedcreatives at gmail.com. The snippet you heard playing was a song titled Heart to Heart Freestyle from indie artist Touch Money Bees. Bees, along with several other artists from the Touch Money camp, were once called the Wu-Tang of Philly. He would also be considered by many as a walking miracle. I'm excited to finally get a chance to get him on the show. But I've done enough talking for now. So, Bees, what you been up to? Yo, yo, what's up, K.A. Every day, I've been up to a lot, man. A lot of working behind the scenes, working with a lot of artists, trying to put my EPs, mixtapes together. Oh, man, I'm like a walking Rolodex over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I like to hear that you're putting in that work, man. Oh, yes, man. All right, so I'm, I'm going to start off. I'm going to give you some easy ones first, and we're going to really get into it. So how did you come up with your stage name? Well, you know, I was like originally started co-CEO of Touch Money Entertainment since the beginning. So I kind of branched off and reinvented and did my own thing with my no time to sleep. So with the name Touch Money already attached to the name Bees, I just put it all together and I just ran with it. And everybody felt, you know, it was a good look for me. So I was like, I'm going to stick with it. Keep it going, you know? All right. I like that. I like that. So uh, I know this is going to probably sound crazy, but I just got to ask you. So how many people come up to you and say, oh, man, you from where Will Smith from? Oh, man, a lot, because, you know, my dad used to DJ with Will Smith at the YMCA on 52nd Street back in the day, so. <laughs> no, I didn't know Jesus, that. That was, like, mind-blowing, but it's like, yeah, everybody always say that. How you come from 5712 Jefferson Street right there? Because yep. my mom used to hang with him, and they went to Overbook together. And not only that, do my own following that I built over the years, it just came up to millions of people. So it was like, when I started walking around the streets, even the Tri-State area, it was like, yo, 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 you touch money bees. But the feeling alone was just remarkable because it knew that I was on a path to something different. You know what I mean? So that's crazy. So you saying that your dad used to DJ? For DJ Will? Joey Knox. Wow, that's they crazy. Just rest in peace now, but yeah, DJ Joey Knox. Yeah, that's crazy. So since we were just talking about Will Smith, so, so how did you feel about the slap that was heard around the world? <laughs> I mean, it was a good reenactment because we know that it was staged from what was going on. But when I seen it, I thought it was real. So I was like, oh, snap, he just slapped Chris Rock. Yeah, it was <laughs> kind of crazy. It, it was, it was kind of shocking, but, you know, they got to do what they got to do for Bussy Stump for rape. So I get it, you know? Also, so you don't think that it was actually real? You thought it was all staged, huh? I mean, coming in the business and, and working in the industry for so long, I know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Okay, so so basically what you're saying, they really best friends, but they, they had to stage that for TV. Yeah, of course. They they industry, but they're comedians, they're brothers. Gotcha. It's like you, you know, if you was to go anywhere with academics, how would you feel? Yeah, I I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all about entertainment, right? Yeah. Y'all go big up each other. Y'all might tear each other down, but it's still content. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So so I gotta ask you, so right now, who would you say is your biggest fan? My biggest fan? Your biggest like, fan. Who? Out of everybody that you know, or maybe be somebody that you don't know, who would you say is your biggest fan? My kids. There you go. 
they, they they called me their role model. And when they did that, I had a little dad moment. I was like, oh, man, I didn't know y'all was watching like that, like that. <laughs> but they watch me even when they go home and their friends watch me now due to YouTube. So now oh. I'm in rotation. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would almost, I would say I had the same answer, but I don't know how your your kids are. But my kids, man, they they hard on me. You know, they're a little older. My my, my youngest, he uh, he twelve, and I got a daughter that's fourteen. And you know, they they be rocking with my music, but boy, they they some hard critics, man. They yeah, let my, me know. My twins twelve, and they really give me that uh, criticism that I need. But at the same time, it's like my daughter, she grinds me up all the time. Like you're embarrassed because <laughs> I like to dance around with my music because that's the type of vibe it is, but. Yeah, they, they, they kids can be your hardest critic. I can agree with that. <laughs> okay, so this might take you a little time to get this one, but out of all the music that you've created so far, which song would you say is your favorite and why? Songs that I released or songs that I have in general in the vault. It don't matter whichever. I mean, whichever one. I mean, songs that is- I released right now, I would say my best favorite is Broken Souls. Okay, you can find that on YouTube or you can Google it. Touch Money Bees on all platforms, but Broken Souls, yeah. Okay, so... Because so it's, it's so heartfelt, you know what I mean? And not only that, but I had people reach out to me and say, look, man, my daughter, she listened to your song every morning, man, and she just couldn't get out the song. I asked her, who was that song? She said, Touch Money Bees, I found them on YouTube. She was like, what makes you feel good about that song? It just makes me feel good all the way around. And then when she played that song, then next thing you know, the next week later, she got her degree. I said, Wow. Okay, so now I got to ask you a follow-on question because obviously that song sounds like it's coming from a personal place. So, so give us a little, you know, a little behind the scenes of what the song is actually about and why it means so much to you. Well, me, myself, I felt like I was a broken soul due to gun violence in Philadelphia. I was shot at the age of 16. I was shot in my spine and I was paralyzed from the waist down. So it was a big journey for me to get back up. And I met so many broken souls throughout the whole journey of rehabilitation, coming back to the streets, because I was more into like, not saying handicapped or disabled, but these are the people that was like kind of clinging to me because it was like, oh, wow, he's disabled. and He still got hope and he can do it. Let's get it going. I could do that, too. You see what I'm saying? So I had a lot of people that I could learn from in order to, to get inspired by that song, bro. It was like deep. Wow, that was... That it touched me, man, and just from you explaining it, so I could see why other people would, would, would feel that way when they hear the song, man. So I appreciate you sharing that with me, man. Uh, all right, so now this is going to be a little lighter. So uh, how do you feel about auto-tune? It's okay to a certain extent. I feel like all your music should not be auto tune I mean, you might want to play with the megahertz and hertz, that's things, if you want to attract an audience, but R is just... Auto tuning every single song, and then you 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 flabber in your lips because you're super on intoxicated, or it just doesn't sound right to certain people. Some people might get it, some people don't, but I don't really recommend auto tuning too much. I got you, and, and I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It seems like you could run into a problem when you perform it live too, because we both know that your natural voice is not going to sound like the auto tune. So when you go now, that you got you know a million dollar engineering team behind you. I don't understand, like, when you go perform the song live, how does that work? You got to have that right blend, because if you don't have that right blend, and most people don't even do sound checks nowadays, you just come. When they come and try to rap over the auto-tune, and you're trying to rap your regular voice, and your voice is deep, or your voice is mid pitch, it's not going to blend right. So I have plenty of times I tried to perform my regular songs over YouTube, and I had to change my voice mid-performance. I had to improvise. Oh, you were saying you had to change your voice so that it'll sound better when you were trying to blend it with the auto-tune. Yeah, because it comes through a, a bigger speaker than it did at the studio. You know what I'm saying? So it got to have a different impact when it's bouncing off those club walls and those those uh, those bar walls wherever you're performing at, any venue you're performing at. Man, you just, you just taught me something this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I dropped a lot of Jews, brother. Yeah, I mean, I just figured if, if I ever did a song, which I actually have a song where I was playing around with auto-tune, but I don't know if I would ever try to perform it out because I just, like, my, my voice is not going to sound like that. So I if you do, you got to give it time to breathe. You know, songs got to breathe, too. You got to actually get on there, listen to it, and then say, all right, that ain't sounding right to me. You know what I mean? And then take your voice up a little. But then you got now you got to come in and out. Now it's not really you. Now it's like you, everybody going to feel like you lip-singing. And it's like... <laughs> Like I said, some things don't sit right with certain people. So you got to be able to know the people, know your crowd, know your following, and deliver. You know what I mean? Supply and demand. 
I like that. All right, so this question, I'm not asking you to recite the words, but just give me the title of the song. So is there a rap song that you know all the words to? All right, so, ju so just name one. I mean, you don't have to sit here and recite the song, but just, it, just, just give me a song that you know all the words to. Lil Baby Emotionally Scarred. Okay, you know all the words of that? Yes, sir. All right, man. I know I'm gonna make you laugh this morning, man. Don't don't make fun of me, man. But I'm I'm gonna let you off the hook this morning. I got a song that I know all the words. So you ready for this? Hey, let's go. So let's stop, collaborate, and listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly, flow like a harpoon daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know, man. Let me stop, man. Y'all know that, man. Look, man. Back. Hey, man. Ice, ice, baby, man. Like that's how we I do, know, man. Vanilla ice. Yeah, there we go. So since Thank you, from, you since you from Philly, you know I had to ask you this question. I can't let you go without asking this one. So between you and Meek Mills in the rap battle, who gonna win? I need to know. Very battle. I, I figured that, but I, I just want to. Ask, I just want to ask right you. Now, the, I just want to ask right you the now, question. You be honest? I'm gonna right get now, you on record. Me, song for song versus me. If battling face to face, I'm not really a battle rapper, but versus me. Well, the reason I wanted to ask you this question because I just know the mentality of most rappers. You're always going to say that, that you're going to be the, the better person. And I'm yeah, not saying I, that you're not being honest. I've been watching him before his career. We've been cool before the career. We had the same PO in the same PO building. We know, I know each other inside out. So I already know what songs to play when I have to play. Like, as far as battling wise, face to face, I would have to prepare for it. But he know I'm a monster with it. He wouldn't battle me if I wasn't. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm a monster. I'm just very humble. That's all. Hey, that's, that's why I wanted to interview you, man. I, I, hey, man, I hear it coming through the music, man. I said, I got I to gotta get this guy on the podcast, man. This guy and crazy. it's only getting better, bro. This is just the beginning. It's only going to get better. I still got so much more to talk about. All right, so, so I got an easy one for you now. So how do you feel about rappers trying to sing or singers trying to rap? Uh, how do I feel about rappers trying to sing and singers trying to rap? I guess I feel like they got to switch up their versatility. Oh, so, <laughs> they, so, they feel like they, they get tired of their cells. So, so, you, <laughs> don't, so you don't have thing. a problem with it? No, I don't have a problem with it, but I'll be getting, because I'll be feeling the same way. I'll be feeling like sometimes I got to switch it up. And my guys be like, why are you singing? Why are you sound so emotional? And then sometimes I'll sing and they be like, oh man, get back to rap. You got to get back to your rap. You see what I'm saying? But now I sit back by myself. And I analyze my own music so I know how to go. Like, I'm into Caribbean vibes now and everything. So, I understand. I get tired of hearing myself. Okay, so next we're going to be hearing you doing some Afro beat type stuff. That's what you're telling me. Neil Fool, everything. Because I'm a songwriter. So, I, I tap into all genres. I'm about to learn how to play the guitar in my own beats, too. So, oh, if you, anybody want to tap into beats and all that, I'm about to be available. So, you about to turn into an R&B singer, too, huh? So, you just about to do it all. <laughs> I'm going back to singing school. Hey, hey man. So, I mean, we could jump on the track together. We could both just be singing. We could do, like, some Chris Brown Usher type stuff. That's what you want to do? I'm with it. I'm with it. Or some Chris Brown Young Thug type of joint. You know, they did the mixtape together. Okay. Right, you want to do it, baby? I'm with it. Hey, bees, you crazy, man. But I, that's, that, that, that's why I rock with you, though. All right, mm -hmm. so, so going along with the, the rappers trying to sing, so what was the first rapper that you could ever remember hearing singing on a track? First rapper I can remember hearing on the track. Oh man, did I like? No, I just just well, you didn't actually have to like it, but just Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent was the first one. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm about to blow your mind. Ja Rule was already a harmonizer, but Fifty Cent was a rapper turned singer. The, the first one I can remember. I don't know if you remember this song. Rest in peace, ODB. Remember that song? He was like, "Sweet sugar pie, I wish you were mine." Looking so good. So you don't even remember that joint. No, that's too that's too far back for me. Yeah, so so that was the first rapper I ever remember singing on a joint. That joint crazy too. You might want to check that one out. All right, so so I got a a, a question for you. It might take you a little while to, to figure this one out, but so would you rather grow slow and organically or would you rather go viral and blow up overnight? That a trick question, bro. I'd rather go organically. Okay. Everything I eat and everything I do is organic. All my following, it might look light, but I'm starting over. I'm reinventing myself. So when people look at my views and they say, well, oh, you like, go back and look at my past because they're going to come back and look at this. So never mind that. 
and look at what's going on. Everything I got is going on is organic to my followers, to my views. Because I go out, not only do I reach to people on Instagram, but I go out on the streets and I say, follow this, follow that. I run into people. If I see it, I'm going to attract to it. I'm going to give you my card. I like that answer. So, but I got to ask you now. So, so what do you have against going viral? Like, like what, what do you think of some of the, the, the downsides against, of going viral? I don't have nothing against going viral. I mean, if it works for them, I mean, it's, it's a good, I, I would like to go viral, like off, just off the rip like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with going viral, but you got to watch what you do after that because I feel like moving too fast and not knowing the business, it'll pull you into a situation that you have no knowledge of. And if you're not prepared, then you already know what's going to happen. Yeah, you you kind of hinted on it earlier. So some some of the things I've heard from artists going viral that it actually turns out to be, you know, a worse situation than if they would have grown organically is the fact that they didn't expect for it to happen when it happened so fast. So they didn't have all of their stuff set up. Like they didn't have all of the catalog of music. They didn't have certain people set in place to help them along the way. So now they kind of scrambling trying to get all their stuff together. And once that train start moving, it's hard to stop it. So you ever see a person like running on the side of the train, like in movies and stuff, and they try to hurry up and get a board like as a stowaway, that'll end up being you or any artist if they don't get that ticket and sit there and wait to board. So this is kind of a follow on question to that one. So. What's the craziest thing that you would be willing to do if you did want to go viral on social media? What would be the craziest thing you would be willing to do to, to go viral on I went, social I media? I went viral already on Philly Scoop Hall in Philadelphia. I was on top of a car, flying on top of a car on the E-Way. I got over 100,000 of views just doing that. So I'm a real stunt devil already. I live a wild, dangerous life. I'm a rock star lifestyle. I might not make it, bull. <laughs> I'm not just a rapper. I'm like a rock star also. So I'm willing to do whatever, just not... Anything that's beyond my, <laughs> my everything. <laughs> so so what you're saying is even if you don't do this rapper thing, you could go to Hollywood and be a stunt double right now because you hang it on. Stunt double, that. comedian, I'm jack of all trees. It ain't, even, it ain't even an industry focus with me. I can do other things too. But I know what I have that can honestly push it to the next level of whatever I want to do. You gonna have to send me the link to this video, man. I, I gotta see this. So you saying there's a video out there where you hanging on to a car? I'm on the top of the roof of a 2022 Highlander, doing push-ups, flying with a mask on like on Spider Man. Everybody kept like, I'm taking videos of this, it's recording this. It's, it was like it was crazy. <laughs> it was like a hundred thousand views and stuff else. But to me, I knew it was a publicity stunt. Once I see people start doing, it, I was like, all right, just doing something. But other people looked at me like, I ain't football. Then you got some people like, yo, that shit was hot. Then you got some people like, I ain't football. All right. <laughs> so how do you feel about rappers wearing fake chains? Oh, man, I was just talking about that. It's crazy that you brought that up. The moistenized. You got to know the difference between moistenized diamonds and diamonds. Moist and nice is like a lower level of diamonds, but you got to be rich to have diamonds. So that fake it till you make it thing is okay, but then what you going to do when somebody pull your cards? That fake diamond stuff, uh-uh. I'd rather rock no chain until I have one chain. Okay. So it ain't it ain't two chains, it's zero chains until you can get <laughs> one chain. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> so, so break this down to me, because I, I don't know if you've seen these videos, but I've seen videos, you know, where the guys have the diamond testers and, and they made it seem like there's diamonds that are manufactured that when you put the tester up to it, it still showed that they're yeah, real. Yeah, the moistenized diamonds, is, that's what I was talking about. Okay, Those so, are still replica diamonds. They're just not the finest quality of diamond. It's like a low-grade under diamonds. Cubic zirconia is not going to pull up on a diamond tester. Moistenized will, VVSs, and, you know, actual diamonds. Okay. But the, but the other ones that you were talking about, it is still... What's the nice is like what they get off the goldshop.com, all that little stuff that be on Instagram, them ads. Yeah, they still diamonds, but they not... After a while, they're going to feed. Okay, so what you're saying is you, you don't really want to do all that till you can get the the real mm -hmm. the real deal ones, huh? They can shine forever. Yeah, that's the most nice on my neck right now, but they real diamonds. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Hey, well... You you doing way better than me. It's gonna be diamonds, diamonds. It's love. So, yo, I, I want about ten moist and nice shades or fifty moist and nice shades. 
It would make no sense. But I got something to wreck my brain everywhere I go. Well, you you see me, I, I have no chains. No, it's all good. <laughs> you probably got a watch or a ring. Well, I'm, well, I'm married, so you know I keep the ring. You know. Oh, okay, and, uh, okay. Well, what you got in there? How many yeah, carrots you got in there? Hey, I got a lot, cause you know. No, no, no. I said how many carrots you got in that ring? Hey man, <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot, man. All I can tell. Look, let's just say that my my whole my whole wedding band is pretty much full of diamonds. But like I, I was telling my wife, I said, look, you ain't gonna be the only one walking around with diamonds. Like we both mm. gonna do this. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, I gotta be blinging too. So you know, she looked this out. Probably bust all the yeah, way around. She, yeah, she looked out for the boy. <laughs> So it's all good. All right. So let me ask you this question. So would you rather be rich or famous and you can only pick one? Me, I want to be humanitarian, so I kind of want to be famous. I mean, money comes with it, being famous. Okay. I can handle the fame. I've been famous for since I was 14 years old. Okay. I can handle the people running up to me, shaking hands, the kissing babies, the things like that. I can handle that. So I, I want to be famous because I'm, I'm reaching towards a humanitarian sometime in the future. Okay. Sound like you might be trying to run for office. Like you might be trying to be the, be the president, like president or something. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not on my yay. I'm on my bees. Oh. I ain't trying to run for president. No, 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 no. I'm too old. I'm 36. By the time I reach where I'm, my peak and trying to get where I'm going, I'm going to be in my 40s. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I started a little late, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to cut the clock in half. Trying to do my little looper shit. You know what I mean? Hey, they say you only as old as you feel, though. So if you don't, oh, if you don't sure. feel old, then you you a young man. You can reach the goal. It's there you game. go. So, so where do you see your music career in the future? Well, I told myself I was giving myself to thirty five with the music, but the way that it's going, I see myself still going for another four years till I'm forty. But I would slowly, gradually go back into my CEO thing of really putting on other artists and giving back to Philadelphia because Philadelphia needs somebody. Everybody's taking their money and just running with it and doing it everywhere else. And Philadelphia is left to, excuse my language, but a shithole. You get what I'm saying? And, and I want to be actually bring that back to life. Not only that, but other places in this world. That's why I really dug into the humanitarian thing more than just saying I want to do it. And I started learning it inside out. I think you're the, the, the first rapper I've ever had on that said they were trying to be a humanitarian, so that's good. And I like that. I like that. Yeah, so, so tell me something that I should have asked you, but I didn't ask you for whatever reason. Um, you didn't ask me, what's my future looking like? I got Touch Money B's concert, Radio Ready, in March 2024 coming up. It's going to be my own concert. Location is... You know, private right now, but that's what we're doing with that. I got Kate Gibbs on the card. I got a lot of other people on the cards. Uh, bringing in my family, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? A couple other artists and, and, and poets and comedians. It's, it's going up. It's going up. So you're saying that you you put together your own concert? Oh, yes. No Time to Sleep is my LLC, my umbrella. If that's something that I'm bringing to the table for the industry because I have a lot of things like uh, my homie Hitman Herc. He got Level to Love out. You see what I'm saying? I got my man Touch Money Kata. He got the Low Gang. I still got Kaboom. He got his caskets. He's still battle rapper. I got NH. He doing this cartel thing. Like You see what I'm saying? So when we come in, we come in like strong. Like, I mean a big heavy duty Bentley umbrella. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Hey man, I like that. I like what you're doing, man. It creating opportunities and creating a lot of doors for people and jobs. Because I know a lot of people that's under me that's like, yo, bees, I want to do, I want to, let me just come around, just do something. I got you, but not yet. Let me get the business in order. And once the business is in order, it's a wrap. All right, so this show is all about uh, people learning from other independent artists. So I, I can't let you go without asking you this. So what mistakes have you made so far in the music game that we could all learn from? Well, the first mistake I made in the music game was investing in myself and not knowing what I was betting on. Because I was just putting my money out there to all these jinky promoters and all these jinky managers and all these all these people that's just selling me dreams and not sitting back noticing that day. If I promote myself a lot more, I could be where I need to be. So my first mistake was betting blindfolded. I like that. I like that. All right, but before we get out of here, man, just tell the audience where they can find you online. Like, drop all your tags, drop all of your, you know, your IG, your Twitter, your Instagram, and all that. 
All right, well, Touch Money Bees. That's T O U C H M O N E Y B E E Z. You can Google that. You can follow me on Instagram at I A M underscore T O U C H M O N E Y B E E Z. That's I M underscore Touch Money Bees. And on YouTube, No Time to Sleep, Touch Money Bees also. You can type it all together. You can space it out however you want it. I'm available. Let's get it. Hey, as long as they know to just put in Touch Money Bees, they're going to be able to get you, huh? Here we go. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking time this morning to come on the podcast, man. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to looking at all the things you got going on in the future, man. Hey, man. Keep grinding. Oh, you too, bro. I'm going to be checking out on you too. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, bro. All right.